Good morning. I'm Warren Bergman. I'm the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs here. Joining me is Christy Kretzinger, who is our Vice Provost for Faculty Success and Other Duties as Assigned, it seems quite often. I'm uh, really pleased to welcome you here. I, I had not quite expected to see the entire ballroom full of, uh, of people who are so keen and eager to move forward with instruction of the highest quality. And I'd have to say that uh, uh, the students in our uh, university are in good hands just looking around the room this morning. Uh, Mark Wardell mentioned uh, one of the, the bold goals that we have and there's a little flyer here that I've got. You'll see these around, you'll hear about our strategic plan on four bold goals. And the four bold goals, as uh, Dr. Wardell mentioned, the first one is to offer the best undergraduate experience in Texas. The second is to offer the best uh, or to uh, excel at research and graduate education, and we merge those two together. The third goal is to uh, uh, be effective and efficient uh, as we are stewards of state money and indeed your money. And the fourth goal is to be relevant, to partner up with the community around us, and that can include the international community to make relevant what we do in both the classroom, the studio, the laboratory, or the field. Dr. Wardell emphasized that first bold goal. And th the emphasis here might be on bold. Some of you, a few of you, as I saw some of our faculty administrators do a year ago when we introduced this goal, really, Warren, you want to be the best undergraduate program in, or, or offer the best undergraduate programs in the state of Texas. Well, that's uh, pretty much a stretch goal, isn't it? Uh, my response to that is that these aren't for easy goals, these aren't four simple goals, these are four bold goals. But the truth is, is that no other, state, uh, no other university in the state of Texas is making that claim that they're going to offer the best undergraduate education. Now in a way it's a little bit simple, uh, uh, a little bit simplistic because as you know, some students will want to come here because they want to, to really extract as much intellectually as they can out of their hopefully four years here. Some want to come here and and be in an altered state for as much of that period of time as they can. Some want to come here and see winning football teams and basketball teams and women's volleyball teams, as do I, as I think, or as I hope you do as well. But uh, that, what that constitutes, that best undergraduate program is going to differ from student to student. But what is clear, what is clear is that the consistent part is the high quality of teaching. Our goal is to be a national research university of 45,000 students. And I'm going to spend just a minute talking about the role, the interaction of research and teaching. And that may seem like a curious thing to do at a forum that is so focused on helping you develop your teaching skills. But in fact, uh, there's a, an old paradigm. You may have heard this, teaching versus research. You may have heard professors say this in the past, or you may have read it in, in uh, academic settings or something like that. Uh, the idea that teaching and research can't cohabit, or at least if you really excel in teaching, then as an institution or perhaps as an individual, what happens is that uh, the research aspect diminishes, or vice versa. We recently compiled a list of the top 50 research programs research universities in the United States, and independently, the top 50 undergraduate programs. Interestingly enough, it was a little more difficult to generate the undergraduate programs. Everybody seems to be focused on ranking the research universities. But the remarkable thing to us was that about 30 of the universities that appeared on one list also appeared on the other list. In other words, you can do it all. You can be a top research university and offer top undergraduate and graduate programs. So that is uh, very much something that we want to uh, uh, emulate here. We want to appear on both of those lists as soon as we possibly can. Now interestingly enough, as you, as many of you as graduate students are thinking about this yin and yang, this conflict, certainly in terms of time it might be a conflict. But let me just share with you a recent study by David Feldon that appeared in Science uh, a year ago. And it was entitled Graduate Students Teaching Experiences improve their methodological research skills. And I'm going to quote from this. Students who both taught and conducted research, and for this purpose we're going to define research very broadly, performing artistry, visual arts, uh, a, a wide variety of activities of scholarship. Students who both taught and conducted research demonstrate significantly greater improvement in their abilities to generate testable hypotheses and design valid experiments, writes the lead author. These results indicate 
that teaching experience can contribute substantially to the improvement of your research skills. So don't get out into the, into the classroom, into the laboratory, face these eager undergraduate students who want to learn from you, and be thinking in the back of your mind, man, I could be doing something else right now. You are doing something else right now, and that is that you're improving your ability to focus, to do critical thinking, and to bring uh, your intellect to bear on your scholarship program as you go forward. Your job is not ensuring that teaching is done. Every instructor does that, of course, but rather that student learning is achieved. And that's kind of an odd way to, uh, to uh, flip it, because we're talking about teaching, teaching skills, and so on. But your goal is to make sure that the students are learning. I'm going to uh, stop with or, or uh, finish with just a couple of thoughts. The first is that, uh, and, and people who know me around campus, I think particularly the faculty, know that I go off in this riff fairly frequently about what you do that first day in class. And what has been done too often in the past is that you show up in the, in the assigned time and hand out a syllabus, say, here's the syllabus, read it, we'll see you next week, or we'll see you next Wednesday, or we'll see you whatever. Uh, we've had focus groups with our students, and our students, our undergraduate students, we know our graduate students are getting better. Our undergraduate students have had an increase in SAT points of 11 points over the last two years. These are the best students we've ever had. And you know what? They're making demands that we've never seen before of the instructors in the classroom. And one of the things that we know from focus groups is that these, uh, these students are saying, teach us, help us learn, and do it on the first day. We're here, we're eager to learn. Well, there's going to be someone asleep in the back row, but, but generally, they are there and eager to learn. So we have put together a series of exercises, and you may or may not hear about them today, in which you can actually challenge your students in a meaningful way and set the tone for the rest of the course of, uh, of uh, the semester. And then finally, I'm going to uh, end on, on kind of a somber note in a way. Uh, there was a study that came out a few years ago that talked about the top two reasons why freshmen drop out of college. The first reason was that after that first year, they failed to make a single friend. Now, that's not your responsibility to help your students make friends. We have people who are concerned with that, our vice president for student affairs, for example. However, the second reason, this is something you can do something about. The second top reason why freshmen drop out of college is they fail to be inspired by a single professor. They haven't been inspired by anybody who's in, been in front of them in the classroom. Isn't that a sad indictment? I, don't, I hope none of the students that were surveyed went to the University of North Texas. Because your challenge, our goal, and what we live every day is to try and be that inspiration. I remember a lecture one time, and I swear to God, I saw a light bulb about a foot high appear above a student who was sitting in the front row. I remember that. I cherish that. And I think that is your goal, is to try and be the one who generates that light bulb every time you get in.